let us go, whispered the doctor to his pupil in a low, deep and unearthly tone, fearfully different from his usually cheerful voice. Edric started at the sound, for it seemed the last sad warning of his better genius before he abandoned her forever. The die, however, was cast, and it was too late to recede. Indeed, Edric felt worked up to frenzy by the overwrought feelings of the moment. He seized the machine and resolutely advanced towards the sarcophagus, whilst the doctor gazed upon him with a horror that deprived him of either speech or motion. Innumerable folds of red and white linen, disposed alternately, swathed the gigantic but well-proportioned limbs of the royal mummy, and upon his breast lay a piece of metal, shining like silver, and stamped with the figure of a winged globe. Edric attempted to remove this, but recoiled with horror when he found it bend beneath his fingers with an unnatural softness, whilst as the flickering light of the lamp fell upon the face of the mummy. He fancied its stern features relaxed into a ghastly laugh of scornful mockery. Worked up to desperation, he applied the wires of the battery and put the apparatus in motion, whilst a demoniac laugh of derision appeared to ring in his ears, and the surrounding mummies seemed starting from their places and dancing in unearthly merriment. Thunder now roared in tremendous peals through the pyramids, shaking their enormous masses to the foundation, and vivid flashes of light darted round in quick succession. Edric stood aghast amidst this fearful convulsion of nature. A horrid creeping seemed to run through every vein, every nerve feeling as though drawn from its extremity, and wrapped in icy chillness around his heart. Still, he stood immovable, and gazing intently on the mummy. His eyes had opened with the shock, and were now fixed on those of Edric, shining with supernatural lustre. In vain Edric attempted to rouse himself, in vain to turn away from that withering glance. The mummy's eyes still pursued him with their ghastly brightness. They seemed to possess the fabled fascination of those of the rattlesnake. And though he shrunk from their gaze, they still glared horribly upon him. Edric's senses swam, yet he could not move from the spot. He remained fixed, chained and immovable, his eyes still riveted upon the mummy and every thought absorbed in horror. Another fearful peal of thunder now rolled in lengthened vibrations above his head, and the mummy rose slowly his eyes still fixed upon those of Edric from his marble tomb. The thunder pealed louder and louder. Yells and groans seemed mingled with its roar. The sepulchral lamp flared with redoubled fierceness, flashing its rays around in quick succession and with vivid brightness, whilst, by its horrid and uncertain glare, Edric saw the mummy stretch out its withered hand as though to seize him. He saw it rise gradually. He heard the dry, bony fingers rattle as it drew them forth. He felt its tremendous gripe. Human nature could bear no more. His senses were rapidly deserting him. He felt, however, the fixed, steadfast eyes of Cheops still glowing upon his failing orbs as the lamp gave a sudden flash. All was dark.